Hi, in this tutorial, I'll cover some of the changes to existing procedurals, as well as new procedurals introduced inside of MyX and Impact 5. Before we take a look at new nodes, I would like to point out some small changes in the organization of nodes that has been made in MyX and Impact 5. Under the procedurals, you previously always had an environment tab that housed a variety of different nodes. This has now been replaced and the nodes can now be found, for example, under the new generator subgroup. So in here we have the axis projection, the direction gradient, image, cylindrical projection, object space radial gradient, along with a whole new set of new nodes. And we'll cover these new nodes in other tutorials. Next, let's take a look at the pattern subfolder. And in here we have the pre-existing nodes checker 2 d dots 2 d stripes 2 d super ellipse and weave 2 d you might notice that now we also have triplanar versions of each of these nodes. So that means you now have access to 3D seamless versions of these nodes. The triplanar versions of these nodes look identical to the 2D versions, however they have some additional triplanar settings, for example to rotate your projection, to adjust the world scale, etc. The first new node I would like to cover is the fibers node. The fibers node can be found under the procedural section, extension pack, in here we have the patterns and here we have a fibers and a fibers triplanar version. Let's start with the fibers 2D version. Let's change the frequency so we can see it better. So you can see this node is great to add fur detail, hair detail, as well as some modifications or settings to create patterns for fabric. The frequency controls the general size of features, the lacunarity, controls the secondary size. So if I set my cursor at this field here and then just press up and down on the keyboard, I'm getting the secondary fiber size. The rotation adds a random rotation to each fiber. And under the modifiers, we have the layers which determines the amount of fibers. So you can go fairly high However, obviously, the more layers you have, the slower this node will become. However, in general, it is quite a fast node. So even with high layer counts, your performance should be rather good. Next, we have the attenuation slider. Attenuation subtracts a value per layer. So if it is at one, the fibers that are deeper in the structure are a little bit darker. If I set this to zero, every fiber receives the same value. So this way, you can have some layering effect within your fibers and, for example, use it as a bump map, etc. The next feature is the segments. The segments repeats the computation with a slight offset defined under the segment offset. So now you can see this is something that is more suitable, for example, for fabrics. The curling slider curls each fiber. With higher values, you might notice some weird effects. So here are some slight artifacts. This is unfortunately unavoidable in this case. So you'll have to be a bit careful with how high you go in the slider settings. Or sometimes these effects are actually quite nice to have to add some more animation. But usually I try to keep my values in a way that these artifacts are not there. We have separate seeds to randomize the look. So we have the pattern seed and the curl offset seed. Both seeds work together. So in general, changing one will also change the effect of the other slightly, but I just separated it um, for easier control. Color A and color B obviously changes the colors. Next up, we have the filtering. If I increase the filtering, you can see the fibers are getting blurrier. By changing the resolution, you can further adjust this blur. So if I step this down even further to let's say 700 or even further to 200, things will get progressively blurrier. With very low values, you can actually achieve interesting effects like this, which also is suitable for fabrics. Let's play around with these settings a little bit so you can see the different effects you can get. The transform section is similar to other 2D nodes where you can control the UV repeat and the UV rotation. So you get a tileable texture. 
which is separate from the frequency which creates completely unique fibers at each point. The next new node to look at is the circular gradient node. The circular gradient node can be found on the procedurals, extension pack, generators, and here we have the circular gradient 2D node. The circular gradient node allows you to do exactly that, create a circular gradient. You have control over where the midpoint is. And you can adjust both the points separately. And in this case, the UV repeat also repeats this entire structure. If I, for example, take a histogram scan, put this above, I can isolate a wedge and contrast this. And you have a Interesting effect. Let's set this back to one. So here I have a bit of a wedge. Next, let's take a look at the new noise selector node. The noise selector node can be found under the extension pack group noise noise selector. It houses multiple noises in one single node. So under the noise type, I can switch between different noises. Some of these settings do not apply to certain noises. So for example, under a Perlin, the octaves and lacunarity would not have any effect. The benefit of the noise selector node is that it allows you to expose different noises to a material or a group. Let's go to the node graph. I've created a smart mask here, which comes from the mask shelf. And if we take a look at the node properties, you can see I have a noise group here. And this is exactly the noise selector. So if I look inside of the smart mask, I go to the noise group. I created a noise selector node and exposed the noise to the outside of the node. So this way the user can switch between different noises easily and everything is quite user configurable. This is where the strength of the noise selector node lies. All of these noises are obviously also available as separate noises. So for example, if I create a rigid noise, I would get the same effect as if I select the rigid one in the noise selector. So you'll have to make a decision if you want the user to be able to switch between different noises or only supply a single noise by creating directly the noise node responsible for it. Next, we will look at the float3 node. The float3 node is a modification of the existing float node. So you can find this under the basics extension pack float. So the original float node just lets you define a value. It has multiple input fields, so you can choose which value fields you want to use, which makes it ideal to expose values, for example, from a material or a group to the outside of the material or group. All of these value fields are added together. So for example, if I set a value of 0.2 here and a value of 0.5 here, I would end up with a complete output of 0.7. Now, if I create the float3 node, it looks fairly similar. However, it has separate controls for x, y, and z, or r, g, and b. So if I look at the node and set a value of 0.5 for x, which is red, and a value of 0.2 for y, and 0.1 for z over the blue channel, you can see I have separate control over each of the color channels, while the original float node always only outputs one value for all color channels. So there's no way to have a color channel. The flow three node is nice, for example, to control separate axes. For example, I could create a axis projection and you can see I have a UV angle for X, Y, and Z. And the float three node would be ideal to control this because I could separately control the X, Y, and Z axis. The last new node I will look at in this tutorial is a node graph only node and it's part of the switches. So if I go to the nodes, layer, extension pack, I already had previously an input switch X4. Now I also have an input switch X11, which has more inputs that allow you to switch between different textures. I could hook up some different images to these different cases. Inside the node, I can say the stepping. So for example, I could say I want a stepping of one and then attach, let's say, a float node to the case selection. If I view this node, 
And in the float node, I change the stepping in increments of one. I can switch between my different inputs. If I set the stepping to something else, say for example 0 0.1, I can switch in smaller increments. So for example here, I'm switching in values of 0 0.1. 1 gives me this, 0 0.2 gives me this, 0 0.3 gives me this, etc. So this node just differs from the previous x4 that it has more cases. So in this case, there's 11 cases. So you can go in increments of 0 0.1 and cover the full range of the 0 0.1 texture for that. This concludes the list of new procedurals I'll cover in this tutorial. There's more coming in other tutorials that are a bit more extensive, so look out for that.